Everyone keeps talking about their holy grail. So it got me thinking about what is my holy grail? Maybe it's time to start looking and maybe buy my holy grail. And no, it's not NARC or The Grid or Smash TV or any of those. It's something a little plain, maybe a little retro one would say. And it all started with these two gentlemen right after Retro Ralph did episode two chasing nostalgia, Pac-Man fever. So while Ralph was searching for his NARC and Smash TV, I was thinking about something different. And the number one person I have to thank for this find, well, it's this gentleman. Hi there, I'm David Sullivan. I am an arcade collector slash hoarder. <laughs> David's collection was on display on Chasing Nostalgia, and when I heard these words, it was music to my ears. Everything's for sale. Everything okay. in here that is mine is for sale. Okay. So which one of these beauties did I want? Well, it's nothing you can see in this picture, and it really doesn't look like any of these. It's actually this gem right here. And I know right now you're saying, what a piece of junk, Rexer. What the f is that? It's a rusted piece of junk. And what is that? Is that Arkanoid? Who cares about Arkanoid? Well, you're right. Who cares about Arkanoid? But sometimes you have to look a little deeper when you're searching for a classic arcade. And if you take a little closer look at things sometimes, well, you'll find something like this, a Nintendo cereal plate, TKG3, which means it was once a Donkey Kong. So let's begin our restore process. First step, we're gonna have to paint it. You saw it was rusted, looked real bad. So we're gonna empty out everything from the inside, give it a rust, rough sand, and start to spray paint it. Now you can see a little bit of dent on this one side, but it's not real noticeable once we put the control panel back on. After painting the feet and the legs, we're going to put those back on and it'll look like this. Now that it's painted, we're going to have to put everything back in. First the power supply, which has the power switch on the bottom, going through the bottom of the cab. Then we're going to do the service switch. I created a new harness for the service switch. Then we're gonna plug in this power converter box, we'll call it. I'm not really sure of the technical term for it, but this will be where the power comes from for the PCB for Donkey Kong. Next step would be to add a new coin mech. The one that came with it was beyond repair, and I always like to have a coin mech that works in my arcades. Now you'll recall the Arkanoid joysticks on player one and player two sides of the control panels. I would remove these and clean up the control panels, turning them into Donkey Kong control panels. I'd reuse the buttons, clean them up a little bit, change all the micro switches, redo all the wiring harnesses, and then replace both joysticks with reproduction Donkey Kong joysticks. It's actually a very interesting type of button that they use on these cocktails and you'll notice they're green and blue which is an interesting color for Donkey Kong. Now installing the joysticks would be a little bit of a challenge because I wanted to make sure I got the dust washer correctly seated in there but I felt like I was missing a bracket that would hold the joystick in there. In the end I made it work and we have a nice working Nintendo reproduction joystick. The CRT was in good working condition except for a horizontal sink issue. I'd get it a cap kit and get that fixed from Sharp Image Repair and then it would look wonderful. A little burn in, but that's okay. As for the audio art, I used a line out converter with an amp instead of using the audio from the chassis. A little easier to control um, as well a little bit more modernizing it. Next step would be to clean up the top of the cocktail cabinet, removing all the Arkanoid labels using some goo gone and a plastic knife here. You could use a metal one, uh, but you'd have to be careful not to scratch the laminate on top. All said and done, it'd clean up nicely. And at the end, we will put on the Donkey Kong labels. The sides of the tabletop were in bad shape. I bondo them, 
clean them up and sand them down and then I'd paint over it. Now these sides were actually a wood finish laminate type material so I wasn't happy I had to paint over them instead of having the proper laminate for the sides. After that I'd use some weather stripping on the edges of the tabletop. I had previously scraped off the old stripping. It was really dingy and dirty and it needed to be replaced. Now this will provide a soft cushion for the glass top as well as keep some debris out from the sides and keep the top a little cleaner. One thing I found extremely interesting was underneath the tabletop were wiring diagrams, video monitor diagrams, cautions. They had dip switch settings underneath. It was almost like having the manual underneath, maybe not to a full level of a complete manual, but it was very helpful when setting up this Donkey Kong. And to find it in this good of condition was actually a huge surprise. And before we put the top on, I'd give it a quick degaussing. Adding the top to the unit would be extremely easy. There's just two hinges that slide right on. Now I did have to repair the wood bracket that held these hinges uh, and just strengthen it in order to make sure the top wouldn't fall off and it would be secure on the unit. After getting the top on, I would replace the feet that go on the legs of the cocktail cabinet. These are specific to Nintendo cocktail cabinets and I purchased them from Mike's Arcade. I'd then add the plastic bezel that goes around the monitor and then put in place the tinted plexiglass. This actually is great. It hides a lot of the burn in and actually makes the monitor look excellent. I'd wipe it down, clean it up before we add the labels, turn it on just to make sure it looks good. And you can see the monitors displaying very nicely at this point. Now the next step is obviously my favorite part, adding the proper labels to go on the tabletop. This is actually a pretty plain tabletop. Uh, there's not too much going on here or too many graphics. Uh, there is some of these units that I saw with two of the instruction labels on each side, but I believe it really only came with one on one side and I think it looks better uh, it's not as busy if you just put one of the instruction cards on it. So we start with the uh, coin in label and there's actually one that's yellow that I think uh, might have come with the cocktail cabs, a yellow coin sticker, uh, but I went with this uh, black and white one. And then I had to two-way tape the instruction card, the one uh, larger one on the upper left. That one did not have adhesive to the back. I would put the controls instruction in place right in front of player one and player two and then I'd put the glass top on. Although I did have the original glass top, it was too damaged and scratched for me to use it, so I had to have another one made by a glass company. After that, I'd put the brackets on that would hold the glass in place. And then a couple other details that I wanted to make sure I got right, I replaced the locks on each side that holds the tabletop down. And then I also made sure to get the bracket that holds the tabletop up working. Now, after all that, this is how it would look. So what's it like playing on this tabletop Donkey Kong? Well, I'll tell you, man kind of sucks. This control panel is very awkward. It takes a little bit getting used to, uh, but hey, maybe if we change the ambiance, maybe something will change. Oh yeah, now that's the nostalgia I was looking for. Hey, all in all, this is a great tabletop here. It's fun to play on, and uh, I'm sure uh, it'll get some use in this household. Thanks for watching The Rexer Show.